I look like the dog's breakfast in a shift dress. So why on earth did I sew one? Well, you're just gonna have to watch to find out. Hi, my name is Sarah and my channel is Naughty Gnome Crafts. Welcome. My channel is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. If this is your first time viewing my channel, thank you so much for checking me out. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate your support. Today's video is a collaboration with Fatmata of traditionally inspired meaningful art. I really love Fatmata's channel. She makes really beautiful things. She works with lovely fabrics. And one thing that she does a lot of that is just so interesting to me is she does a ton of pattern hacking. So when we were discussing between the two of us what we should do for our collab, we settled on using a pattern that we have both sewn before and trying to mix it up a little bit, do something a little bit different. She definitely brought up trims or doing pattern hacking. Pattern hacking is not something that I'm really comfortable with. It's not something I like to do a whole lot. So I was thinking more along the lines that I would choose a pattern that had a couple of different views and just sew up the other view. And the point of our collaboration is just to show how much mileage you can get out of the patterns that you buy so that you can use them over and over and make different types of garments. So the pattern that I have chosen for our collaboration is the Wixton Shift Top and Dress. I made this pattern once before last year. I got it in a needle sharp box. So for the pattern description, it says, this loose shift is both comfortable and elegant, the perfect wardrobe staple. Choose from three different lengths, a cropped top, above the knee dress, or calf length dress with side slits. Yeah, more about the length in a second. The top has a plain back, while the dress has added fullness from back gathers. Patch pockets, waist tie, and three quarter length sleeve options are included. Neck is finished with an easy to sew facing. This pattern comes in sizes zero to 22, and I made the size zero. So before we get into my new make, I just wanna share a little bit about my original make, which was the top. So I used the fabric that had come in my needle sharp box. It was a red double gauze and I sewed the crop top. It's not really a crop top. I don't think it's more of like a shorter top. It's not like hip length or anything, but I would not say that it's cropped, at least not on me. And you have the option to add pockets at the bottom, but I left those off. It was just totally plain. And this garment was actually featured in one of my videos where I wore a week of handmade garments that I just don't reach for. This was one of those that I don't ever wear. So I wore it in that video and I actually have not worn it since. And the reason that I settled upon why I'm not wearing it, it's not that I don't like it, but I just feel like it's a little bit boring maybe. When I'm going through my closet in the morning to pick out what to wear, I usually just go right past it because it just doesn't excite me. And I will insert a picture here so you can see what the original version looked like. Now I have been thinking of different ways that I could maybe try to jazz it up, maybe embellish it a little bit. I thought about doing some embroidery, but to be honest with you, I don't really like doing embroidery. I have done it before, but it's just not my favorite thing to do. I thought about adding some purchased trim, but I went kind of on a, fell down a rabbit hole of shopping for trim on Etsy. And I think I'm just too picky because I couldn't find anything that I liked. I was just trying to think of other ways that I could make it more interesting, but I was having a hard time coming up with something. I really just, I didn't want to really go out and buy anything. I wanted to use what I had and I wanted something that wasn't going to take a tremendous amount of time. So I actually, in the end, I settled upon adding a little contrast breast pocket. So I pulled out a quilting cotton from my stash that was from Japan. I don't remember the brand or anything, but it, it kind of looks like a Liberty fabric, but it has little kitty cats um, hidden among the flowers. And I thought it was really cute and I thought it coordinated well with the color of the top. So I just used a pattern that I already had and I cut out two pockets and then um, sewed them together. So I made a lined pocket. So the edges are nice and crisp. And then I just tried it on and pinned it where I thought it should go and I stitched it down. So this is my new and improved Wixton shift top. I'll try to bring the pocket closer so you can see it. And I just think it adds a little fun detail that makes the top a little bit more interesting, but it's still pretty neutral that I can wear it with lots of different things in my closet. I don't think that the pattern makes it so that I can't wear it with other printed fabrics, for instance. And I do hope that I will get a lot more wear out of this now. I do think it's definitely more fun than it was. So I'm really glad that I'm doing this collab with Fatmata because I just feel like working with her has inspired me to get this out of my closet and do something with it to make it so it's more wearable. And just a quick note for the review, I did not make any alterations to this at all. I just made the straight size zero. Now let's talk about the new version that I made. 
I had this fabric that I had purchased from Joann's on clearance. It was a linen fabric and I think it's pretty popular. I've seen it a lot on Instagram actually. And because it was on clearance, I got it at a really good price. I had about two and a half yards. And I knew when I picked it up, because it is a stripe pattern, that I wanted to do some stripe play. Like whatever I made with it, I wanted to do a little bit of um, interesting playing with the stripe direction and just doing something a little bit fun and different. Now the instructions for the Wixton shift are incredibly straightforward and easy to follow. There's diagrams. I think that perhaps the only thing that tripped me up was that I had a hard time figuring out what the seam allowances were supposed to be, but I think it's actually like in a list on the first page. So that was the only thing that tripped me up. And for the dress version that I made, I actually made the shorter dress. Although on me, because I am four foot nine, the shorter dress is actually a below the knee length on me. It's basically a midi dress. And I did go ahead and trace out the long dress just in case I ever wanted to make that version. And when I held the pattern piece up to my body, the longer version is ankle length on me. So basically a maxi dress, or at least as close as I ever want to get to a maxi dress. So um, yeah, just definitely bear that in mind. I've definitely seen that from other people who've made this dress as well, that it does come out pretty long. So I am extremely short, but just bear in mind, I do think that this pattern runs long. Now let's talk about the design changes that I made. So I did do some light hacking on this, but it was extremely light. So all I did to hack this pattern was I added a center front seam. So I just laid out my pattern piece um, on the fabric and then I used my, my straight ruler and drew 3 eighths of an inch um, on the fold line so that I would have a seam allowance so that I could cut the front into two pieces. So I did one panel with the stripes going horizontal and the other panel with the stripes going vertical. And then for the pockets, I did the same thing where I had them um, one going one direction and one going the other direction. And I just thought that that would add a lot of visual interest. So the shorter dress does not have any side slits bit built into it because it's supposed to be above the knee. And I couldn't decide whether I should put side slits in mine or not since my dress is gonna be longer on me. But in the end, I elected not to do the side slits and I think it worked out fine. I don't have any issues walking in this dress. If I made the longer version, I definitely would put in the side slits. And I had not originally intended to make the tie belt, but in the end with my two and a half yards of fabric, I had just enough fabric left to go ahead and cut out the belt. So I'm like, why not? I'm already here with this fabric. I might as well just sew it up. So I went ahead and made the belt at the last minute. On the back, you can also see that this was not a design change, but I just played with the stripes a little bit here too. There is a single layer yoke. This is not a lined yoke. And so I um, cut that with the stripes going horizontal and then the back with the stripes going vertical. It has this nice gathered detail on the dress. The, sh the top actually does not have that feature. It's just plain. If you feel like you get value out of my videos, I would really love it so much if you would give me a thumbs up because it helps more people find my channel. Thank you so much. So you're probably asking yourself, if I look so bad in shift dresses, why on earth did I make it? Well, there were two basic reasons for this. Number one is that we had that heat wave a couple of weeks ago, and I actually struggled during that time to find anything that I could wear that was comfortable. When it's 90 degrees or over, at least where I live, it's just unbearably hot. My house does not have central air conditioning. And on those days, I just don't want any garment like touching my body or touching it as little as possible. And because I don't wear things like shift dresses or trapeze dresses or swing dresses, anything that's really loose and flowy, I don't tend to wear things like that because they don't look good on me. But when it's super, super hot, I really just don't even care what I look like. I just want to be comfortable. So I was thinking that a nice loose shift dress would actually be ideal for that sort of weather. And I don't care what I look like on those days or if it's flattering or not, or if I look like I'm wearing a moo moo, I just want to be comfortable. So that's part of the reason why I made this dress. The second reason why I made this dress is because I have been working on making some swimsuit cover-ups and I've decided that my ideal swim cover-up is a dress that I can throw on over my swimsuit at the beach but you know if my husband and I stop for lunch on the way home or something I could wear it you know more as a dress and it would look acceptable and I've made a couple of swim cover-ups which you will be seeing in my monthly makes video but I wasn't quite happy with the result. And I think that this shift dress is actually a really nice swim cover up. 
So I do think that it fits my criteria of being something loose that you can throw on over a bathing suit. But I also think that it looks nice enough that I can wear it outside of the beach. So I am really happy with this particular garment in terms of using it as a swim cover up. So that was my second motivation for wanting to sew this dress. Also, on those days when I do want to wear the dress to work or out or something, most of the time I'm probably going to cinch it in at the waist. The tie belt to me, like I don't mind the tie belt, but because I have all of the different stripe play going on, I feel like it looks better when it's tied in the back where the bow is in the back, because otherwise I feel like if the bow is in the front, it looks too busy. So I do like the tie belt, but it's not my favorite look. I actually prefer to wear this cinched in with a purchased belt. I think that it looks cleaner, it looks more elegant. And if I were to wear this dress to work or something, that's probably the way that I would style it. So would I sew this pattern again? Yes, I definitely will be sewing it again. Now that I've dipped my toe into the water of light hacking, I think that I'm ready to do some more interesting things. This pattern is incredibly popular, so there's lots and lots of examples of it on Instagram. So some of the ideas for additional hacks that I think are completely approachable and something that I can do, even though I don't like hacking, are things like color blocking. I've seen people add like princess seam lines and then you have like a center panel that's one color and then the side panels are a different color. The Wixen blog has a hack where you can do the top and then add a gathered skirt. I think that would also make a really loose, comfortable dress. I've seen versions where people have added either a button front placket or a button back placket. Either of those I think would be interesting. I think it would be fun to play with the neckline and change the neckline shape to be like a V shape, like the one that I'm wearing, or maybe a square neck. And then I am actually interested in making the long ankle length version. I think that that could be super cool and comfortable. So that is another thing that I'm gonna to add to my list to make someday. So originally when I first made my top, I kind of had written off the pattern and was like, eh, it's okay, I don't really love it. I didn't think that I would ever revisit the pattern again, but I'm so glad that I did because I do have all of these ideas brimming in my head now. It is such a simple design that there are so many interesting and unique things that you can do with it. And I'm excited to exercise my creativity a little bit and revisit this pattern again and again, and just continue to make versions where each one is a little bit different from the last. So thank you so much to Fat Mata for collaborating with me. You have definitely inspired my creative juices and I can't wait to see what you have made. So if you have not watched Fat Mata's video, I'm gonna link it on the end screen so you can go check it out and see what she's made and tell her that I said hello. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again next time.